Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today, I know, slightly different setup. I uh, went back to my standing desk, so I'm gonna be switching between standing and sitting. But uh, yeah, today we're gonna be doing the rendering for a glass inside of Maya. Now, the process is actually a little bit complex, okay? So bear with me because it's gonna be a, a quite, quite a ride. Now, someone mentioned on, on one of the past videos that I was speaking like uh, someone trying to sell a vacuum cleaner at a supermarket, which I found quite funny. And uh, he was right, actually. I think I've been like very like accelerated this past couple of weeks. So I'm gonna try to take it a little bit slower. You guys let me know if that's what you want or prefer on the comments. So we're gonna be doing this ball right here. Uh, we're not gonna be doing the cork. I'm just gonna save this image as. I'm gonna save it on the desktop for now. I'm gonna hit save. And we're gonna go here to the front view of our um, Maya scene. We're gonna say view, image plane, and we're gonna import an image. And we're gonna import, of course, that glass thing that we had right there. So there we go, just hit open. And this is the first thing about glass inside of Maya and pretty much inside of any other uh, rendering engines. The size at which you do glass will have a very big impact on how it renders. So for instance, is this bottle grass right now, if I create a cube, we know this cube is one centimeter high. So this bottle would be like, I don't know, like 12 centimeters high. So it's gonna be like a really, really small bottle and I would like to be a slightly bigger bottle. So I'm just gonna grab this whole thing and scale it up. Oh my God, we're gonna start with the sneezing, everybody. So once we have this, I'm gonna try to center it as close as possible to the to the center line or to the middle line. It's, it's not a perfect photograph, so it might have a slightly different effect. And then now if I scale this up, I'm gonna be able to tell like how big this is. Right now this is at whoop, 30 centimeters. I, I would say 30 centimeters is a good size for, for this particular element. So I'm gonna delete the cube and uh, now we're gonna use a very cool trick with curves to do this bubble very, very quickly. So I'm gonna go to create curve tools and I'm gonna use an EP curve to create a, the profile of this bubble right here. So we're gonna go to the very top, just like creating the contour of the element. I'm actually gonna keep it really clean right here and, and you'll see why in just a second. Now I'm gonna go to the control vertex. Control vertex are the things that control the curves inside of curve, very similar to vertex in, the, in polygons. And what I wanna do here is I wanna try to, to use the control vertex to match the profile of the bottle a lot better. So if I see that's uh, like bulging out or changing a little bit in certain areas, I'm just gonna push it in and, and get it a little bit better. All of this ones, for instance, on the bottom, I'm gonna flatten them out. So they're really, really flat against the, the point right there and flat against that one right there. Perfect. Again, if I need to like modify the, the circumference or the, the, like, the properties of this one, we can like, change things a little bit right there. And that's it. This image, we can bring it to the back. I'm going to grab this guy right here, and we're going to use an option that's inside of the curves menu or the surfaces menu, which is the revolve option. So I'm going to go here to the options, and we're going to revolve along the Y axis. We're going to select that we want to generate polygons, not nerves, and we're going to use quads, general, per span, per span. Those are the options that we need to generate at this ball right here. And that's it. So once we have this, I'm just going to delete history, first transformation, center pivot, all that stuff. We don't need the curve anymore. And now from this, it's a lot easier to model the whole uh, bottle. So how are we going to do that? Very, very easily. So I'm going to delete this cap right here on the, on the whole bottle. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of thickness. I'm going to control E. I'm going to extrude this in to generate the, the thickness of the bottle. Bottles, glass bottles, they can be a lot of thickness, right? But we're going to go something like that. There we go. And of course, the normals are inverted. So I'm gonna say uh, mesh display and reverse to get the normals to the other side. And then on the top part right here, I'm gonna grab this. If we go to the, to the front view, you can see that this top elements, this one right here and this one right here, they create a little bit of a, of a lip. So I'm gonna say Control E. And with R, I'm just gonna scale them out to create the little, like the, the surface, the outer surface of the, of the ball. So when we press number three, as you can see, we get this very, very nice effect. Now, if we need to make that cap a little bit bigger, we can just grab all of this right here, move this down, and there we go. We're gonna get a slightly uh, thicker effect right there. We could also bevel, for instance, I think, beveling this line and this line could give us an interesting result. And uh, that's it. Usually you don't get this sort of like faces going in, so we're gonna bring them down so we get a, a smoother transition right there and it's not as intense. And on the inside, usually the border is also a little bit like close to the outer edge. And this one's a little bit more like bevel. So I 
kind of want to grab that uh, edge right there. Bevel it. Give it a small element so that we get a, a really tight fit. So you can imagine that we would have a... Um, What's the word like a cork or something and get a, a really clean result now you can see there's a little bit of curvature right there if we want to make this completely straight here's what you can do you can delete this lines right here and then delete this inner lines which were the ones creating the like the thickness and then if we grab from this guys to this guys to this guys there we go we can uh, bridge and uh, just create a very straight effect i am going to give it a couple of divisions just to keep things a little bit more organized on the on the like a uh, subdivision side of things and there we go we get a really like straight um like transition going down into the bottom now this was just a very very basic like modeling technique if you guys want to learn a little bit more about modeling about uh, like rendering materials and all those things i can invite you to check out skillshare where you can check all of our courses for free hey guys abraham here i just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to skillshare skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn improve and grow as an artist we have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in skillshare you can check the description down here and skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership with this membership you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares so what are you waiting for check skillshare down here below there we go so now that we have this we are going to go through the shading process first and then we're going to go through the texturing process so for the shading i'm going to create just a plane it's going to be like the table where this thing is going to be like sitting on like let's keep that one for just a second and let's create a very quick camera right here so i'm going to go camera i'm going to say panels look to select it and we're going to do a um a full hd render so if we turn our resolution gate this is what we're going to be seeing now, i don't want to see the edges of the table so i'm going to push the tables like that we could even do like the wall but uh, since we're going to be using some light techniques i actually don't want to have anything on the back so for this plane i'm going to say assign new material arnold and we're going to assign a standard surface the material is going to be really dark i'm just going to call this material always always keep your things organized because otherwise once we start adding more nodes and stuff it becomes very difficult to to know what's happening i'm going to make this a like a rough dark material and then this one right here i'm also going to assign a new material arnold ai standard surface and this is going to be a glass material so we're going to add a m a glass material there we go now we need some lights otherwise this is not going to work so uh let me save real quick i'm going to call this glass exercise and i'm actually going to save this for you guys so i'm going to be giving this one away on discord if you go into the discord channel and you go into the maya channel i'm going to have this file right there for you guys to follow the the exercise if you want to if you want to join the discord channel it's down here in the description i'm actually going to file save scene as i'm going to call this glass exercise finish so that i don't overwrite what i already have cool so um if we go to arnold we're gonna add a light a sky dome light and uh for reflection this is super important anytime you have glass or you have a uh, metal you do need an hdri or some sort of like environment for the glass to like actually reflect something otherwise the glass is going to look really 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 bad so i got this hdri here's the very like basic neutral photo studio and this is the one that we're going to be using i'm going to grab this one panels look for selected i'm going to say panels tier of copy there we go so we're going to keep our copy right here and then what i can do is i can actually go to render and go to arnold render on this one right here so as you can see i'm going to be able to see the render directly on my little window um and over here we can go to the perspective view and anything that we change right here should update over here keep in mind that this is definitely going to be a little bit heavy so i'm actually going to stop it for just a second go to the options right here change this to gpu which is not as precise as cpu for glass but it's going to be a lot faster and considering that i'm uh, recording right now and i don't want to have any errors um i'm gonna do it like this so if we go to the material of the bottle let's very quickly delete history so we only have the material right here we're gonna get rid of the color we're not gonna have any color on the bottle itself and uh, over here one thing that we can do is we can go to little animation options and there's an option here to update view all there we go okay so let me just reset this real quick there we go mm, i'm not sure if it's warming up i think it's warming up let's do a normal render first the, the gpu like there we go so it prepares the notes perfect so now we should be able to go over here and uh, okay so this is the glass we have no color and we're going to go to transmission and we're going to turn the transmission on and as you're about to see the bottle is going to disappear over here it's actually not working very well let's uh let's try this again the so panels look for selected panels tear off copy we kind of need to like reset this thing 
Let's see if that works. No, nope, it's having some issues. Okay, no worries. Let's let's try it here on the on the main viewport and see if this works. It's kind of working. Something something's like messing up this thing. No problem. So we're gonna do this uh, traditionally. We're gonna go Arnold and render over here. So when we render, as you can see, we're gonna have a glass bottle. And this looks, I mean, this already looks quite nice. One of the things that we can control with this glass bottle is if we go to the materials, we can bring the roughness of the specular channel down. And what's gonna happen is the glass bottle is gonna be a lot shinier. Now, remember that I mentioned that it was very, very important that we were using uh, like real time um, or real world scale for, for this sort of things. One of the reasons why we need to do that is because we're gonna be using some patterns or some elements to modify the way this glass looks. So right now, if we hit render, as you can see right there, the glass looks quite nice. I'm gonna go here to the viewport. I'm gonna use this option right here that like ignores the material so that we can actually see the object. Uh, but don't worry, on the render, we're, we're gonna see things exactly the same. So if we go to the bottle again and we go here, we have the first thing that we can change to make this glass look a little bit better, which is of course the color. So if we take a look at the reference, you're gonna see that it has a slight tint to it or some glasses can have a slight tint to it. And I've seen some like old glasses and they get this sort of like brownish, oldish effect like uh, you can see right here. Like this sort of like brown effect that looks very, very interesting. So if we go to the color and we select a like a red color, as you can see, we're gonna be adding this, oh wait, that's, uh, that's actually the specular. So specular, we wanna keep it the white. So on the transmission color, we're gonna grab this sort of like a red tint and you can see that the whole object becomes this very interesting like dark effect. So I'm gonna use this like dark arm amber color. And then what I'm gonna do is I can start playing with the depth. Right now, we, when, when you don't have, when you have zero depth, what's gonna happen is this color is gonna be applied uniformly to everything. But if we start adding a little bit of depth, as you can see, we're gonna kind of like tweak down that amount of, uh, of, of color and we can generate a slightly different uh, hue. If we keep the depth really, really low to, I don't know, something like a, like a one, you're gonna see that we get a lot of the color, but it looks really realistic, like, or it starts looking a lot more realistic because this is actually how light would refract through the depth of this element right here. If you want like a really dark, you can go to like a 0.5, but again, it's very important where we're doing this in real world scale because otherwise we're not gonna be able to get this very, very cool effect. Look at that, this looks like a, like a medicine bottle or something, right? Like, I, I don't want this to be as intense, so I'm gonna go for something like a, like a two. And then if I see that this is a little bit too amber, for instance, I can start pushing this towards the, the, the reds again to get a, a slightly different effect. So it's a very, very cool thing that we can do here with the, with the depth of the glass to, to give it a tint to the, to the overall thing. Then the scatter is another thing that we can do here. If we start adding scatter to it, it it's like, like, uh, like making it so that light doesn't go perfectly through the object and it scatters through the object. As you can see, if we add this white thing, it's kind of like having this white haze on the inside of the glass, which gives us again a, an, an interesting result. It makes the, the, the glass look old without actually having to change the properties of the transmission itself. And you can actually uh, like tweak this. Like if I do a pink hue, you're gonna see that there will be some pink colors that are not gonna be let through. Uh, we can go for like a red color, we can go for like a green color. And it might be a little bit difficult to see, but you can actually like see some of the samples there how they're picking up that stuff. Now, talking about samples, you guys need to remember that when we're doing a glass, one of the things that about glass is that it really needs a lot of like samples to work properly. So I'm gonna go here to the adaptive sampling. I'm gonna enable adaptive sampling. And I'm gonna keep this at 20. 20 is way, way too much. Like it's really, really high, but it's, it's gonna like give me more and more time for the whole thing to process. And as you can see, more and more of that green is showing and it's gonna like appear instead of like the depth of the, of the, or the haziness of the, of the bottle. Now, of course, I don't want this. I'm gonna go for like a yellow, uh, like a, in this case, like a yellow effect. And this is what we're gonna get. So not bad, right? Like just by tweaking a couple of values here, we can already get something that looks really, really interesting. Keep in mind that we can use an, an optics denoiser, but glass is really finicky about the denoiser because remember that the denoiser that we use, what it does, it, it averages out what, what it sees. So the, the closer we are to the final product, the closer the average is gonna be. If we keep the samples really low and then we average that out, we get this sort of like dancing points on the, um, on the final render that looks really, really bad. So all of these things right here, especially if we do like an animation, we will get like a really like, Un unwanted effect so let's say uh we want to like make this depth a little bit higher the, the glass is going to be a little bit thicker as you can see the scatter is a little bit more intense let's go with a white color and let's desaturate the color quite a bit i just want to have like a like an interesting hue but but not too much so let's go here 
and let's play with the with the death. There we go. So I want I want this to be a little bit more um, transparent so that we can see the the contents of the element. So talking about the contents, let's say we want to add a little bit of liquid inside of the element, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate the object. I'm going to grab a copy of that object. And then I'm going to select the level where I want the thing to stop. Let's say that one right there, or this one right there. And I'm going to delete all of this faces. So as you can see, we're left with this thing right here. We, of course, need to fill this in. So I'm going to say, uh, there's a couple of options. The easiest one is just say fill hole, and then uh, edit mesh and poke. And then this edge right here, I can bevel, do two segments in a small fraction. So that when we smooth, we get a, a nice result. But here's the, the super important thing about refractions for our elements. When you have liquid inside of a glass bottle, you want to scale that liquid so that it actually overlaps with the walls a little bit. Okay, you definitely need to go through the walls a little bit. Why is this? Because otherwise we're left with a little like air pocket inside of the glass and then the liquid content. And that air pocket changes the way the refraction works and it gives us an unrealistic effect. So I'm going to say that this is like old, uh, I don't know, like whiskey or something. So I'm going to add a new material, Arnold, AI standard surface, or old wine might be a good idea as well. So let's call this M liquid. And it's going to be very similar. So we're going to go here to the transmission. We're going to turn the transmission on. The base color, as you can see, goes off. And when we do this, as you can see, the refraction is going to give us the proper refraction. Right now, it looks like water. But if we add some color to the transmission, again, this sort of like amber color, now it looks like, a, again, like old whiskey or something like that. And uh, we can, again, add a, change the depth a little bit, which is going to make it like lighter or darker depending on how much uh, like information we give it look at how nice it looks with just a little bit because like this right here it doesn't look bad with zero depth but if we add a little bit of depth the things that are like where you have more distance in the liquid it's going to look a little bit darker so it really really makes it look way way more um photo real for for what we're going for and i'm also going to use a little bit of scatter as well to make it a little bit hazier so as you can see that looks like old like dusty sort of like whiskey that we have right there there we go. Not, not very tasty, right? <laughs> but it, it gives a, a nice thing right there. We're getting an error right here. What does it say? It's poly surface shape. Okay. So we just need to go render and say update full scene so that it knows that the, the object is there. Cool. So this would be like the basic preparation of our glass bottle, right? Like this is what we would do to just do a traditional glass bottle. And here's the thing about dirt, which is the, the next thing that we're going to go for. When we're talking about dirt, we need to understand that dirt is something that goes on top of the material. Like we're not, when you have a glass bottle, for instance, I have my glass right here. If I leave this glass outside and it starts getting like dirt and, uh, and grime and mud and stuff like that, I'm not changing the physical properties of this material, right? I'm changing the physical properties of the materials that are on top of this object. Therefore, what we need to do, or the technique that I'm about to show you, will um, allow us to create something that's going to leave on top of the object, okay? So we need to, of course, give this thing some UVs so that we can like, texture it properly. So I'm going to grab this guy right here again. Um, I'm going to use this thing. There we go. I'm going to isolate this bottle right here very quickly. And by isolating this bottle, one of the things that I can do is I can do a UV camera-based projection. Uh, a, a cylindrical projection might work as well, but I actually don't want to like dirty up the inside. I want to do something slightly different for the inside. So I'm going to say UV, 3D cut. We're going to cut here on the lip of the element, and we're going to cut uh, like here on the base. I would say it's a good idea. Same thing on the inside. We're going to cut there on the base, and then we're going to have one cut along the surface and one cut along this surface, right? So if we go to the UV editors and we unfold this, and control l we're gonna have this now it looks fine however it's like upside down so it might be a little bit easier to read it if this is like not upside down so we're gonna do it like this it is a little bit distorted uh but again i'm not too worried because instead of substance painter we do have some tools to like not have to worry about this but if we wanted to be like super super precise we could do some like cylindrical mappings or something to get this things uh looking a little bit better um, so yeah, once we have this, we can go into, into Substance Painter, as I mentioned. So I'm going to say File, Export Selection, and we're going to export this on our assets. And I actually already have a whiskey called this bottle. I was doing some tests with a glass. Actually, this is the third time I'm recording this because the first time um, we had a power outage here on the, on, the, on the block and I lost everything. And then the second time I was going for like 30 or 40 minutes and it was not looking as good. I was like, nah. I don't want to do this, or I don't want to show this. I want to do it right, and I did it again. 
So we're gonna go here. Let's do 4k map since we're already going like all like a uh, super super high. And uh, we're just gonna say open GL. There we go. Uh, you can see we got some faces there. We forgot to do a mesh display soft and edge to make sure that everything is soft. So file, let's just export this again. Bottle, export, yes. Go back here, file, new, select the bottle again. 4K, 4K, OpenGL, because OpenGL is what we use with Maya, hit OK. There we go. So now our bottles work. We do need to do our bakes. I'm going to do 4K bakes as well. I mean, we're not really ex extracting any important information except for like the ambient occlusion and the curvature, which is going to be handy for a couple of maps that we're going to be painting, but nothing, nothing super, super intense. And there we go. Wait a little bit and let's take a look. Yeah, that looks good. So again, we, we talked about this when we were doing the glass for games, which is the window. It's on the channel if you want to take a look at it. But when we're texturing, we don't need to really think too much about the glass. We need to think about the things that are going to be on top of the glass. So I'm going to do a fill layer here. And I'm going to do a sort of like a blue color, like blue light color, something like this. And the roughness, or actually I'm going to go black color. And the roughness is going to be really, really low. So this layer right here is going to represent my glass. Okay, so I know that everything that I paint on top of this thing is going to be affecting what the uh, glass is inside of Maya. So let's do something very simple. Let's go for some, like I got this, uh, I like this one, Cracked Canyon Rock. Uh, this is a premium material that I have. I'm just going to add it on top of the whole thing. And what I like about it is the colors. I actually don't want to use the normal information. I just want to use the color information because this looks like dirt and dust, right? So I'm going to use this one. I'm going to set black mask and I'm going to use a generator first. So this generator is going to be a uh, position generator. And the position generator, as you can see, is a gradient that I can use to add more dirt on the bottom part than on the top part. So if I do a, a flip right here, you can see that we get this very, very nice effect where we have a lot of dirt on the, on the bottom part and less dirt on the top part. We can use a little bit more blur here. We can change the balance so that we only have like until like halfway through the bottle. I actually want to go a little bit higher, so something around there. And I'm going to add a pain. Well, before that, I, I want to break up this thing right now because right now it just looks like a very boring gradient. I would like to add a little bit more, you know, like visual interest. So this is a trick that you can use here and substance, by the way, if you want to learn a little bit more about substance. We have the courses. Where's my, my courses here? Is that one? No. There we go. So all of this course is right here, available right now. Udemy, Skillshare, everywhere. So uh, I'm going to go here and I'm going to say add generator and we're going to add a, a no, not generator, sorry. I'm going to add a fill layer. So I'm going to add a fill layer right here. And I'm just going to look for some noise, any noise. Like this black and white spots looks really good. And as you can see, this black and white spots is affecting everything in the bottle. But if I multiply this against the gradient, I'm going to get this very, very cool effect where I'm getting this like interesting, um, interesting breakup where uh, the gradient that I had before this is now being affected by this one right here. And we can change, for instance, the contrast of the dirt. We can change the intensity of the dirt and generate something that looks really, really interesting. So this thing right here, I like how it's looking. We do have a problem. As you can see, there is a little bit of, um, uh, what's the word? There's a little bit of a problem with the, uh, with the seam line. So this is on the black and white spots. I'm going to change this projection to Pipe Planner Projection. As you can see, it's going to clean it up and give me this very, very nice, like, dirty effect. So that, again, this will be like my first layer, like a layer of dust on top of the, of the whole bottle. And I like it. I like how this is uh, looking, but that doesn't mean that we have to stop there. We can start adding more things on top of the, of the whole element. So for instance, we can add another layer now, and I'm going to keep this layer. It's going to be like a, like a fingerprint layer. I'm going to do a, a light color right here. The roughness is going to be really, really high as well. I'm going to add a black mask. And then if we go again to the field layers, there is actually a, a fingerprint effect that we can use here instead of substance. It's very, very cool. It's this uh, grunge fingerprint spread. And as you can see, we can add another like slightly different layer that uh, tells me where the fingerprints are. I'm going to change this to triplanar projection as well. As you can see, we get those extra layers right there. Now I want to make this a lot dustier. So I'm going to change this to like a lighter color. There we go. And now we're getting this interesting effect where you have a, a dirt layer and then that, like another like dust layer on top of, of, of everything else. Um, so this will be, again, the roughness part of the, of the bottle. This is something that we can do with the roughness part. And we can add, I think I'm going to add one more layer here. So I'm going to go to the rust layer. And I'm going to add a black mask. And this one, I want to make it a little bit more like, 
like uh, my own like I want to paint specifically where this thing is going to be so I'm going to go to my brushes here and I'm going to go to a dirt splash and I want to add just some actually like dirt brush this one looks a little bit better I'm just going to add some like interesting effects right over here So you can imagine, I don't know, like some sort of like blood or something that's only going to be on the very bottom part of this, of this uh, bottle. And as you can see, even though we're not using glass right now, hopefully you can picture that all of the black parts that we see right now will eventually be the uh, glass pieces. So this one I'm actually going to change to overlay so it gets darker. There we go. And maybe play a little bit with the colors. So it's not as intense. So we're just creating, again, a visual interest, a visual gradient of dirt here on our bottle that's hopefully going to give us a very nice result. So all of these elements, I'm going to control G. I'm going to call this dirt. So that way we can just like turn it off and focus on something that's also important, which is going to be the normal map information of the whole thing. Because right now the bottle is very perfect. It's just like a perfectly clear surface. And it will be interesting if we can give the bottle just a little bit more texture to it. So I'm going to add a fill layer right here. And this fill layer is only going to be affecting the height information. And I'm going to add a black mask and I'm going to add a... Ba, 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 where is it? They feel layer again. And we're going to go to something like a clouds. So if we go to like a clouds element, like this clouds 2, and then we go to the height information and we'll start pushing it either low or up or down, you can see that I can change, as you can see, the surface of the glass. So now the glass is not going to be perfectly glass because it's going to have this little distortion on the glass where the bottle is not like perfectly, perfectly like fabricated. Maybe it's been like chipped or like damaged every now and then. And we can have this very, very cool effect. I'm going to go to the clouds. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to change this to triplanar projection. And I might change the tiling so that we get like slightly bigger like effects, something like that. Look at that. Look at how nice that bottle looks. Again, imagine that all of this is going to be glass eventually, and we're going to get a very, 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 very cool effect. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That, that's, that's what we need to, to get from this element right here. The last thing that we're going to have to get is a mask, right? We're going to have to get a mask that copies all of the information that we have from this masks right here so that we can get a, a, proper, um, a proper transition, a proper, like, uh, uh, gradient towards the glass but let's export this very quickly because i actually do want to have my um what's the word i want to have my normal map information i'm going to export this uh, png is fine let's do let's do arnold ai standard and uh we're going to hit export so if we open the directory right now you're going to see i actually have a couple of extra layers but right now the one that i like or the one the one that i want is this one right here which is just like a very basic, like normal texture that's gonna break up the glass information that we want. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rename this, I'm gonna call this glass normal map, just in case I do another export and we get this thing. Now we also have this roughness, which is really cool. And we're gonna be using this roughness to, to generate like the actual dust. But now we need to get the, the mask, right? We need to find a way to extract the mask and know which parts are gonna be opaque and which parts are not gonna be opaque. This is where we're going to go back to the opaque options right here. So we're going to generate this PBR uh, metal rough with alpha blending and hit accept. And uh, when we do this, what we can do is we can go to texture set settings, add the opacity map right here. So now we're going to have an opacity map. And if we go to the initial layer, to this glass layer, we can turn on the opacity. And if we bring the opacity down, as you can see, the bottle is going to disappear, which is not what we want. So I'm going to do a, a fill layer right here. Okay, and then all of these layers right here, I'm also going to enable opacity. So they are actually uh, like adding towards the opacity of the object. The opacity all the way there. You can see it looks opaque. Right? So that's, that's kind of like what we want to get. If we go C, we can look for the opacity mask. There we go. And what we want to have here is we want to have a map where all of the things are either opaque or not. And if we bring this down, this is looking a little bit closer to what we want. So the wider they get, the more opaque they're going to be, right? And the darker they are, the less we're going to see from. Them. So this is the mask that we want to uh, generate. This is the, the opacity pass that we want to get. Why are we seeing like not as opaque right here? It could be due to some like uh, technical properties of some of these elements. But right now, like this actually looks, looks good. I, I think it's just... Uh, 
the amount of like mass that we have but the cool thing about this mask is that we can actually modify the intensity of this shirt directly inside of maya if we need to um what else can we do, can we do here i guess one, one more other thing we could do is we can add just like a few layer inside of all of these masks let's turn everything off except for opacity no because we actually do want to have this mask right here did I change the opacity on any of this? Uh, we can try doing a linear dodge. Let's see if that helps. There we go. So linear dodge is definitely helping. It's giving me like wider effects, especially on this rust, which is the, the final one that I painted. I definitely want to make sure that the, that the mask or the opacity looks as nice as possible. We could also export these masks and, uh, and combine them inside of... Um, inside of photoshop but this one right here looks looks quite nice so i'm going to use this one i'm going to say file and we're going to export the textures again and as you can see now on the list of exports we're actually going to have a or we should have a an opacity if we don't we might need to change this to something like the um the traditional like uh metallic roughness workflow and there should be sometimes i mean, I mean normally this like alpha information is exported as you can see right here if i go to the arnold ai standard Sometimes this information is exported into the, um, into the base color, although I'm not seeing it right here. The normal map, do we have any information here? No, we actually don't have the information. So I'm actually going to export this in a different element. It's going to be the Unreal Engine 4, because I'm sure that Unreal Engine 4 has, there we go, the alpha information, so the opacity mask that's uh, being exported from this opacity uh, map right here being exported on the color so i'm going to export and uh, if we go to the directory and we change the base color right here the uh, bottle m um base color this one right here as you can see it is transparent so it has an alpha map which is what we want so that's uh that's the texturing part of things i know and i told you guys this was a it's a little bit more complicated than than what it might look but uh, it's, it's gonna allow us to generate something really really cool so I'm going to go to this glass right here. I'm going to add a new material to the glass, Arnold, AI standard uh, surface. I'm going to call this M glass dirt, okay? And here, if we go to, or if we start plugging things in on the hypershade, we're going to build up the dirt shader itself. Let me get rid of this one. There we go. So we got the glass dirt, and uh, here's where we're going to build like all of the information. So if we go to our maps, we need the base color, and we need a DM glass normal, this one right here. And uh, we, of course, also need uh, the roughness. So bubble glass uh, rough. Uh, we can use this roughness metallic. That's fine. So um, the color, first one, very easy. Just goes into the color of the glass dirt. And if we change this to our shader ball, you can see that we got all of the cool colors right there. And then the roughness occlusion, we need to change the utility to raw and alpha is luminance. And we're going to connect alpha to specular roughness. So what this is going to do, it's going to make things a lot rougher. You can see how the different types of dirt are a lot rougher right there. They're not as reflective, and that's what we're looking for. Make sure, again, raw and alpha is luminous here. But actually, no, we just need the, the uh, green information. There we go. That's going to make it way, way rougher. You can see how the, the rust is really, really rough right there. The normal map needs to be plugged into a bump to the node, the alpha over here. And this also is set to utility raw. Also, alpha is luminance, and this one is changed to tangent space normals. And then this out normal goes to that normal camera. Okay, so that's going to give us a little bit of bumpiness on, on certain parts of the app. If we go to our render real quick, let's uh, save before anything bad happens. And if we render right now, uh, what we should get is we should get the information that we're looking for. We're getting an error right there. Let me actually stop this. I'm going to close the render and just open it up again. So let's do Arnold and render again. And we should see the bottle with its new texture. There we go. As you can see now, we have this texture with all of the dirt that we want to have on top of the crystal, right? Here's where the, where the fun part begins. Once we have our proper glass material and our proper element right here, well, actually, we need, I'm going to go back to the glass material. Where's the shot cam? Let's go to the render. Let's go to the shot cam again. So this is the, the traditional material. Let's just do a quick thing here on the glass material. So I'm going to get the inputs. And if you remember, we exported a different normal map with this one, which was just a normal map that had the little like uh, 
like bumpy effects for the glass. So we're going to use this again, bump to denote. I'm going to get the out alpha right here. This goes to normal camera. This one changes to tangent space normal. And this one's going to be set to utility raw and alpha is luminous. So again, all of the setup that we need. So if we compare real quick, let's, uh, let's save this picture and we compare real quick, especially take a look at the, at the reflection of the element and you're going to see that the reflection of the element is going to be slightly more wobbly because now we have this like interesting texture on the glass that's going to make it look a lot more um, alive, a little, a little bit more realistic. It has more imperfections to it. Look at this. Look at how, how it refracts the light. You can see the, the reflection from the C shape right there. It was very straight when we did have it. And now that we have this like little roughness, the glass looks a lot more interesting. So it gives us this very, very, very cool effect right there. I'm going to stop it right there. And now what we need to do is we're going to use a little bit more of an advanced shader. It's not difficult, but it's a little bit more advanced. And it's called an AI layer shader. This is one way to do it. Remember, there's like tons of different ways to do things here inside of the 3D world. So I'm going to bring in my glass dirt and my glass uh, elements right here. And the base of this AI layer shader is going to be middle mouse and drag and this one right here. We can call the layer glass if we want to. We really don't need to. And right now, what we're telling is, hey, we're going to be using this layer shader. And the first layer of the shader is going to be the glass. So if I grab this guy, right click and assign the existing material, we can assign that layer, layer, layer shader right there. And when we do that, need this, need this. When we do that, you need this one. We're going to have a, the same render. Like right now, it's going to be exactly the same. Why? Because we're just telling it, hey, layer one is this guy right here. But then if we go over here and we drop the uh, we activate layer two and we drop the glass dirt on top of the first input right there, what's going to happen if we render is we're telling it, hey, now render layer two, which is the dirt. So how do we tell that we want to like mask this layer out so that we can see the layer beneath it? Well, of course, we're going to go to this thing right here, which is called a mix node. So the mix node is a float value, black and white, that can tell us how and where we're going to be doing the connections. So in this case, I'm mapping everything right here. If you guys remember from the glass dirt, there is alpha information that we're going to be using. And we're going to be using that alpha information to visualize the mix layer on this AI shader. So from the base color, we're going to plug this in into the mix color. And as you can see with middle mouse, it automatically connects the alpha channel. If everything works according to plan, what we should see now is we're going to see a material that's made out of two different materials. First, we have our glass material. And on top of this glass material, we're like applying or we're, we're generating, we're, we're uh, masking out a secondary material, which is this one right here. And look at how nice this interaction looks. Because now well, what's happening here is we're actually seeing the dirt glass or the dirty glass by, or, or being affected by both elements. So not bad, right? Like not freaking bad. This looks really, really cool. One thing that doesn't make a lot of sense from, um, from a, again, from a rendering perspective is that now the glass, the original glass, is still a little bit too perfect on its reflections. And given the fact that it has a lot of dirt and stuff, I would expect the glass, the original glass, to have a little bit more roughness, just a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit more roughness so that the reflection is not as perfect on all of the different points. And that's it. As you can see now, we have a very, very nice, like dirty glass here inside of, uh, inside of Arnold that is made out of, by a layer shader. Now, the important thing about the layer shader, this is something, by the way, that you can also replicate in other softwares. But the cool thing about the layer shader is that, or not the cool thing, the thing that you need to know about the layer shader is that the layer shader is actually doing two draw calls. So it needs to render the glass first, and then it renders the dirt afterwards. So your render times will definitely be impacted. The render time will be a little bit higher than if you had a single shader that's taking care of everything. But as you can see, thanks to this uh, shader, we're able to generate something that looks very, very, like, again, photo real, right? So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. One more thing that we could do to improve this, if we go to the options right here to the render settings, and if we'll go to the render depth, we can change the diffuse to eight, the specular to eight and the transmission to 16 to give light or rays more time to go through the objects. And again, if we compare the results, you're going to be able to see a couple of like extra, extra refractions. Like you can see how, how the, the bottle like, like lights a little bit more on the edges. And uh, it's going to give us a, again, a little bit more of a realistic result. So that's it. <laughs> that's how you create a, a dirty, 
uh like a like glass shader here inside of um inside of um of arnold there's a lot more things that we can do we can play around with uh, more bumping is we can combine normal maps we can do like again a lot of more uh complex stuff but as you can see this already gives us a really really nice result now some of you might be wondering it's like why, why are we seeing this thing dark when on the on the initial or on the original element we had a a different color right it was like the sort of like white color well you gotta remember that the color that we get is the result of the transmission that's being passed from one layer to another so we do have the proper uh like dirt material which we have right here but the mask might be getting a slightly different effect now i did mention that i was going to show you one more trick so here we go this is the final trick and this is the trick for everyone that's been here for the past 40 minutes learning about a 3d you guys are going to be getting places because uh, there's a lot of people that just watch the videos for like five minutes and they think they get uh, they have all that, uh, that they need but nah, you really need to like put in the time to get this uh, to work properly so i'm going to use something called an ai uh range and the ai range is pretty much like a levels thing that we can use we can connect the alpha to in this case all of the inputs and then the output here from the alpha the r channel is going to go to the mix and if we do this right now and we render, it's going to be the exact same thing. Like nothing's going to change. But here's a very cool thing. If we grab this AI range and we click this little button right here and we render, we're going to be seeing what the AI range is seeing. So if we want to see more of the rust, we need this mask to be a little bit wider. So if we go to the AI range, we can play around with this inputs right here and either push this up or push this down. And what this is going to do, as you can see right here, is going to change the way the mask is going to be working. And we're going to get, in this case, a little bit more contrast. So by doing that, we're going to get a lot more dirt on this lower portion because we're using this mask to, to blend between the two layers a lot more. So this AI range, really, really powerful tool as well to uh, generate a, a more contrasty look on the mask or to modify the mask. Because right now we're doing a lot of masking or the mask is like the main responsible element from getting this result right here. So if we can get that to work properly, then we're going to get a really nice result. Now, just to make a, a quick composition right here, I'm going to grab all of this, guys. I'm going to uh, control G and I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to make them a little bit smaller, for instance. Just get it to the side right here. I'm going to duplicate it again and I'm going to press control and on the, on the green square to, to make it more like a, like a wine bottle. Move it like this. I'm going to do another one of those long bottles rotate always rotate a little bit so that we can get different parts of the of the mix and then for instance for that one right there we can select the whiskey and just get rid of the whiskey so we don't have anything right there we can make this a little bit flatter a little bit smaller there we go and then i'm gonna duplicate one more time this guy I'm gonna make it a little bit fatter like a fat little like bottle and we rotate around and since they're all going to have like different amounts of liquid and different amounts of uh, like effects, this is going to look like a really, really cool composition. I'm going to say panels, Luther selected. Let's go right there. Get a nice composition. Let's uh, save real quick. We do need to close the render or just update it. And when we open again, we're going to have five different bottles all sharing a very similar, um, like it's the same materials, right? It's the same like, uh, like liquid materials, the same glass materials. But now it looks like a like a little composition. So you can imagine if we're doing like this sort of like fancy sci-fi like laboratory and we want to have a lot of potions and stuff like that. Well, there you go. By using all of the tricks, we can get something that looks really, really, really cool. Really, really, really fast. Like doing this in just an hour, I think it's a it's a really, really cool thing. So that's it for now, my friends. I'm gonna stop the video right here. I'm just gonna finish the render. I might do a couple of little like light tricks here and there to, to make sure that this looks a little, a little bit more interesting. Um, but this is pretty much it, my friends. And, um, and I'm gonna try to have a couple more videos during the weeks. So if you wanna support the channel, make sure to check out premium courses. That's how we survive, of course. And make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe so that we can uh, keep in touch and you guys get the notification when we're live. We're also gonna be live later today. So if you're watching this video, probably in about uh, nine hours at 9 30 a.m in mexico time 9 p.m in the time we're gonna be live continuing with some like sculpting so yeah make sure to come up and uh, hang around with us talk we got the discord channel as well and uh, that's pretty much it for today my friends thank you very much i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye